Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, let's talk now to the political editor of The Sun, Tom Newton-Dunn, and Rowena Mason from The Guardian. Welcome to both of you. Let's talk about George Osborne's trip to Berlin, part of the EU negotiation. Tom Newton-Dunn, are number 10 and number 11 panicking over these negotiations? Uh, we don't know for sure, but uh, it's a strong suspicion they may well be. Uh, they've got a problem, I think, quite a considerable one, uh, in that they've lost control of the process. Uh, a lot of frenetic activity over the summer when, you'll remember, David Cameron jumped around European capital after European capital to prove he was really going to try and crack a deal as soon as possible. George Osborne then followed suit, did a lot of uh, uh, jet setting around Europe too. And then it sort of went quiet uh, and the government weren't able to say very much, largely because they weren't getting very much from uh, their EU uh, compatriots. And the reason was because they didn't want to put anything down in writing because it would leak to terrible people like Rowena and I. We all go and write about how they're not going to get what they asked for. So uh, they reached an on pass. In that time, uh, the, the Leave campaign launched pretty more successfully, I think, than the, uh, the Remain campaign. Uh, and it feels like it, it's slipping from their grasp. The polls are now growing towards Leave and descending away from staying in. Uh, and they really do need to regain the momentum uh, in time for a deal at the EU Council in December, which looks pretty unlikely now, but certainly just to grab public opinion back to, to look like they know what they're doing, which is what George Orson will intend to do in Germany in his big speech tomorrow. Right. I mean, Rowena Mason, isn't the problem, the sort of crux of all this, that actually some of the EU leaders say they still haven't seen any detail or concrete proposals, and a lot of people here say that too. Is that going to be forthcoming? Well, yes, David Cameron has said that he's going to set out exactly what he wants in a lot more detail in a letter. Um, I think it's coming next week. So we will see a little more detail at that point, but we've got some vague areas uh, that we know that uh, Downing Street wants to renegotiate on. One of them, uh, George Osborne's probably going to be focusing on tomorrow, which is about making sure that um, Britain's financial services are protected and that Eurozone countries don't take decisions that uh, affect the UK negatively um, if they push for closer integration. Um, the problem with something like that is that it, it probably, probably doesn't excite the public back home very much. It's not something that uh, is a big goodie they can bring back from uh, Europe on, on immigration and reducing regulation. And that, of course, is the area that people are interested in, which brings me neatly on to Theresa May, because Nigel Farage rather mischievously yesterday said he'd be delighted if the Home Secretary uh, wanted to lead the official campaign for Britain to leave the EU. She, of course, resisted, um, as she would, uh, saying anything or illuminating us uh, further. What's your thought on that, Tom? I thought uh, what Theresa did yesterday was absolutely fascinating. Uh, in like only she can really do it. Theresa May has got this extraordinary deadpan style. Of, I mean, if you ever have lunch or try and interview her, mm. she absolutely cuts you dead, uh, as she did with Andrew Marr yesterday. Gives nothing away. But that also works the other way. When you, when you should be backing the government's line, which is very much David Cameron saying, we're going to win this renegotiation, it's going to be good, and we're going to be able to remember and we can stay in the EU, Theresa May completely failed to say that yesterday, uh, setting a, a very obvious horse running that she may be for out. Now, I don't deep down believe she really is an outie. Uh, she's a pretty centrist Tory and a uh, Bank of England former economist. So I think she wants to remain in. But she's playing a very interesting game, keeping her cards close to her chest and, and giving herself that bargain power, the fright uh, to Downing Street to be able to ask for more for David Cameron, especially on immigration, which you know we know she and Boris Johnson have been on the record powerfully in the past saying that they really do need to get something back on freedom movement and that at the moment absolutely isn't on the table. Right, Rowena, um, on the housing and planning bill, how controversial is this going to be actually with some Tory backbenchers around a policy forcing councils to sell high value council homes to fund other schemes like right to buy discounts for housing association tenants? I think it was something that they all, all Tory MPs really welcomed in the election because they thought it was a great thing that they could sell on the doorstep to swing voters. Um, the problem is that, a bit like the tax credits debate, they might be worrying that actually it's less popular uh, than they thought it would and there might be more problems um, than perhaps Downing Street had first anticipated. So it could be another one of those tricky areas where David Cameron hasn't quite got the support of his whole party on.
Rowena Mason, Tom Newton Dunn. Thank you very much. Have a good week. Suela Fernandez, you. let's pick up on that policy. Do you support the idea, the principle of forcing councils to sell high value council homes when tenants move on uh, in order to fund either more sort of low, uh, low rate housing stock or right to buy discounts for housing association tenants? You know, we've got a housing crisis of epic proportions in this country at the moment. And we, um, you know, there are people in their 20s and their 30s who can't afford to get onto the housing ladder. The solution to that is to increase the number, uh, the supply of housing. And any way we can do that whilst devolving powers to local authorities is the right thing well, to do. How's that going to do that? Well, by um, encouraging um, local authorities to release their stock, it's going to increase the supply of housing, so that's going to bring the supply down, and that's also going to increase the number of affordable housing available to people to get onto the housing How ladder. How is it going to increase the number of affordable homes? If you're getting rid of or forcing councils, particularly in expensive areas like London and the South East, uh, where it's very difficult to afford homes um, unless you've got a very big income, how is getting rid of low-cost housing and council homes going to help? That. Well, there is also a uh, provision in, in the whole framework for replenishment of stock. Um, and we heard that, um, you know, with um, um, selling of um, council houses, um, they, will, they will be done on a basis whereby the most expensive houses, particularly in London, are released for sale and they're replenished with um, uh, additional well, stock. Well, yes. This, oh, is, this is so unreal. Um, uh, and is a complete disaster. In, in parts of London, in my constituency, Hope and St Pancras, we've got a massive overcrowding problem. Every week I've got families coming to me with uh, two, three, four children and parents in a one-bedroom flat, and the council, however quickly it tries to build, is not able to provide the units that are needed. In Camden, what it will mean is selling off of a third of the existing council stock. Now, I don't really care whether you're in the Tory party, Labour party or any other party. This is a disaster in terms of housing for the future. Well, it, 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 it is so wrong that we, should, we should not be lulled into this sense of sort of uh, security that somehow in the long run it is a, it is a disaster for those families. And anybody who really wants to make the case should come and see these families and say to them, not only have you not got somewhere to live now, you're not going to have for a very long time for the future. To sell off the stock that you've got when you can't even house the people in your in your council um, is a, is a disaster. Just briefly the, respond and then we'll move The on. problem is that we've got local authorities um, in possession of um, vast amounts of housing stock which is not being efficiently used. And if we, um, if this, this legislation um, compels them to release that so it's better used, people can own a home, uh, they have a stake in society and we increase home ownership for a whole generation of people. Right. We will discuss this further, of course, <laughs> when this comes before Parliament. I've been getting away with it all.